much for joining us on the program where topics of national interest get our attention. And today we start our discussion in relation to Nigerian Senator E.K. Kweimadu, who has got himself caught up in an alleged organ arresting charge levied against him at a United Hindu Magistrate Court with the inflating support of the National Assembly. The support they seem to have for him and what picture is this painting of our dear country, Nigeria? Also, we take a look at the case of Royal State Deputy Governor Raoul Fulaniyo, who managed to stall his impeachment and I dare to say escape it at least for a while now. And lastly, we will be following the resignation of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, that's Justice Tanko Mohammed, due to health reasons, and President Buhari swearing in Ulukayode Ariwola as acting CJN. Legal petitioners have shared their view on what they expect from the new CJN, and we shall listen to that. And joining us live from Lagos is Professor Isha Kakintola, is a human rights activist, professor of Islam Exatology, Lagos State University. And also joining us live from Ibadan is Michael Volon Sholano. He's a legal practitioner and a former Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice. It is indeed my pleasure to welcome you to this week's episode of Firecrackers. My name is Iriba Misalako. We take a short break and when we come back, Firecrackers will be starting. Please stay with us. I plead with honorable colleagues to support this motion to lend our voice to call on Nigerians to be cautious of how they uh, tarnish people's image just for something. Because the, the, the authorities from London or anywhere, or Metropolitan Police, somebody reported to them, we're not saying they should not do investigation. They are doing their work. We should not even condemn our disaster because they are going to judge based on documents and evidence before them. And But for us as a people, we should also look between the lines to know that there are certain things that we do not, we do not just begin to make comments out of fancy, you won't know, know how to talk, or out of, oh, you don't like his face, or you like his face. So, I mean, at this point, my general submission is that it's time for us to pray for the daughter of Ike Kuremadu, and it's time for us to be very cautious and allow the process to be followed. Of course, the law will take its course. Facts are facts. And any finding or any action to be taken should be based on facts. And nobody should be subject to any jeopardy or even a double one when those investigations are not complex. I believe that there ought to have been time. There ought to be, have been more a thorough and a fair assessment of the facts prior to you know, the subject, uh, uh, you know, the present uh, travails of the Aguero matters. And if that has not been done, I think this motion speaks to it. What this motion aims to achieve is justice and fairness for all. We cannot have a situation where a simple allegation that has not been thoroughly investigated will result in a high-ranking public officer who has served and is still serving the Nigerian public, the Nigerian state, and he has a diplomatic passport, Mr. Speaker. So we cannot allow this to happen. If it can happen to someone of Senator Ike Ikeromadu's status, I wonder what will happen to ordinary Nigerians. It's, it's important, not, we're not talking about anything, but that um, uh, for the parliament in UK to make sure that Senator Ikeromadu gets the proper due process, the rule of law is applied, and that um, uh, he's treated fairly uh, on, on, this, on this matter. I believe the UK Parliament or the Congress of the United States, if the roles were reversed and if they had one of theirs or even a, a, a citizen in, uh, of theirs in this country who was going through the same travails, I believe uh, uh, those parliaments would responsibly um, uh, um, get involved as well. Uh, so it's important uh, that we 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 um, we apply diplomatic pressure, but Nigeria has very strong diplomatic ties with the United with the with the United Kingdom. The Senate, in a closed session, deliberated on matters relevant to the workings of the Senate, in particular, and the National Assembly in general. The distinguished colleagues, in the closed session. The Senate 
was briefed on the issue of the arrest of our distinguished colleague, former president, former deputy president of the Senate, distinguished Senator Ike Ekoramadu in London on allegations of organ harvesting. The case was reviewed from the day the arrest took place and um, the, the briefing showed how hard working, dutiful and patriotic the Nigerian High Commissioner to London and his people have been on the arrest of our colleague, the Sungu Senator Ike Ekwaramadu, the former Deputy President of the Senate in London. It is good to have you back. Now let us dive right into the conversation and joining us live from Lagos is Professor Ishiak Akintola, a human rights activist and professor of Islamic ecology from Lagos State University. We thank you so much for joining us at this time, sir. Okay, all right. Now let us get started. What were your reactions when you found out that a Nigerian senator, that is Senator Ike Ikuremadu, was being held in the United Kingdom for organ harvesting? What were your reactions? Well, I felt um, uh, it was uh, terribly wrong somewhere. It didn't just add up. Uh, I want to believe that uh, Senator Ikuremadu uh should be above all that at this level and um i was uh, i felt uh, exonerated when uh when uh, i think the next day we heard that even his own daughter had this kidney problem and he was looking for a solution for it so there could be an attempt to set him up somewhere uh there might be an attempt to set him up. There might be an attempt by the, by the little boy to do some mischief. We, are, we can't be totally judgmental at this, at this stage because the facts of the case are not quite uh, before us. But I want to, particularly with the story, if it is true that a Kremadu's uh, daughter has kidney problems, then Nigerians should uh, show sympathy with him. We should uh, solidarize with him instead of, um, instead of um, uh, uh, demonizing him. If, um, we're all parents, and uh, if he went uh, to, some, uh, to some extent to ensure that his daughter got uh, treated and got well, he was being a responsible parent. And um, somebody somewhere was trying to frame him up. And I, I, we need, we, I, I will want to urge the federal government to really investigate from, from the, let's check the background of that David or Davido, who, whose organ, uh, the Kremadu, is being uh, accused of attempting to harvest. Um, it, it, it couldn't have gotten to that level uh, because uh, if once it is confirmed that his daughter is whether biological or whatever, if he has a daughter who has kidney problem, I think we should uh, take it very easy with him and we should, uh, Nigerians should rally behind him. The federal government should, uh, uh, should send a powerful uh, legal team to fight this case. Uh, and in this, the worst thing that you could do is uh, uh, punish an innocent man and uh, make, him, uh, make, make, him, make, him, uh, make him become so desperate, make him suffer for what he did not do. 
Uh, oh, okay, sir. But let us this, this allegation. This angle now. Yes. Let's take that for instance. Let us go by the parameters that what the boy said was indeed true. If the love of parents, uh, if the love of parents ask for their child, the fear of losing a loved one, could we say that that reason enough is okay for you to take the organ of another person? Like because he was charged with um, organ harvesting. Now, is the love and fear of losing a loved one enough to go to that extreme? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, you, you, we wouldn't, we wouldn't know for now. Yes, you call it extreme, but is it really uh, extreme? If your daughter, if you are a parent, you see. In local parentis, you want to ensure that your daughter gets well. I am not saying it should be by all means, by, f by foul or fair means. And, and we cannot say it, it, it use foul means now until we get the facts of the case. There might, be some, uh, there might have been some agreement somewhere. And then somebody somewhere, uh, due to greed, they are backing out and they are then setting him up. So we can't really say, uh, unfortunately, we can't reach him now and we can't hear his own side of the, of the story directly from him. So that's why we need to uh, take it very easy, show some understanding, some sympathy. Well, he's in trouble today, but um, that, this kind of trouble, it's kind of uh, strange. It wouldn't be, is it money? How much is, uh, will an organ fetch him? And uh, with his level, with his status, does he need this kind of money? That's what we should be thinking of. But if, and once it is confirmed that his daughter is really, really down with kidney disease, I think we really need to, 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 uh, to, to, to be very, very uh, careful with uh, the way we, we, we make allegations. With Kurimadu, oh. Uh, might be totally innocent. Oh, okay. Now, but let's say that, given the fact that the the claim right now is that his daughter might have renal disease, is it not? If we look at it like biologically, is the parents and family not in a better position to donate the organ for the child rather than looking for an external donor? Because I don't see the reason why there be need to bring in an uh, bring in an extra party when the family is there and they could perhaps give this organ to the child Thank you. in need, which also but wants we, to we, push the narrative it, 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 that here in Nigeria, somewhere. in the United States, in Britain itself, people donate organs, people donate blood, people support uh, those who are ill, uh, knowing that uh, well they have this challenge. We, we can't say the parents should donate. You don't know the condition of a Kerimadu's kidney. You don't know the condition of his wife's kidney. And of course, a lot of people donate their kidney. They look for somebody who will buy their kidney because they believe it, it's, a, it's a kind of uh, exchange, you know, uh, trade by butter thing. You know, they need the money to do to settle something and somebody else needs this organ if they want to save life so okay, since sir, it is the practice the world over and it has never been been uh, an illegal thing unless it was done by by force or uh, you know without without uh, the knowledge of the donor that's when it becomes illegal or if it's uh, the the kidney the organ of of a minor in this case we have not established either Therefore, we don't need to be so hard on uh, on the uh, uh, on the former uh, deputy uh, uh, deputy uh, speaker, so to speak. Okay, sir. But if we are to look at the legal way for donation, there are about six thousand people waiting for kidney transplant now, and it is such a big pool that if even if someone wants to donate an organ to someone because they have to first service this about 6,000 people on the list first. So if I am coming in now and I say, okay, I want to donate this organ to this particular person, I would be questioned. 
I'll be asked several questions on why is it that I want to donate the kidney to this particular person? Why not donate it to this large pool of people waiting for the transplant? So if really the case here is that his daughter really does need a kidney transplant, why not just go about it the right way? Because I don't know why someone who is trying to be mischievous, like he said earlier, would just come up with the allegation that someone wants to take his kidney, got papers for him to fly him out of the country, and then he was arrested and charged with um, or, uh, organ harvesting. But we also have this uh, system whereby uh, the health facility asks people who are down with this renal disease to look for donors. They ask their parents to look for donors. Some of us have been in this position before. And uh, it was hard, it, it could be hard getting a donor. You, and some of the health facilities don't really have the kidneys you know, on standby. It's not given on a platter of gold. And so if, uh, if they ask uh, the family to look for a donor, which hospitals do that a lot, they ask the family to look for donor. So why do we turn around to come and blame the, the same family uh, for, for bringing a donor? There might not have been a, a solid arrangement between the family, uh, the, I mean, a Kremadu's family, and, uh, uh, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the young man. Maybe communication breakdown somewhere or something else, or a, a frame up, like I said. And uh, I, I, we should realize that it, uh, it, it tarnishes the image of our country if the, if the number five or number six of our former number six citizen is being held for this kind of thing. And we couldn't, and uh, it, it's been found guilty. I pray it doesn't, it's not found guilty, and I want to believe that something is wrong somewhere. Staying with us, although we do have a whole lot of questions to say, ask Professor Ikea. But as we are trying to regain connection with him, please let's see how now what Nigerian lawyers their expectation is of the acting CGN. Please stay with us. May I formally welcome the the honorable CGN to the mantle of leadership of the entire judiciary in Nigeria. Um, a, a lot is expected from him do in acting capacity, but I know in a short while he will be definitely be confirmed as the, the substantive CG. And now the lawyers, the litigants, the judicial workers, they expect, and in fact entire, the entire Nigerians expect a lot of uh, uh, goodies from the, or deliveries from the, from the number one judge in Nigeria. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, welfare of the judicial workers, the judicial officers, uh, I expect him to address that area because uh, a hungry man is an angry man. The judicial workers for years, they have been clamoring from, for some uh, improvement in their welfare, uh, condition of service, uh, housing allowances, housing packages and some other welfare packages. You should look at that. Also, the judicial officers, uh, I mean the judges, the magistrates and the likes, they too expect a lot of it because the work they do, to be sincere, is the work is, is enormous. The, 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 there should be, in, the numbers of the judicial officers should be increased at these levels, the Court of Appeal levels, the Supreme Court level, the Federal High Court, and the State High Court. The major cause of delay in dispensation of justice is insufficient judicial officers. One expects him to immediately address the issues that were of concern and which the 14 justices of the Supreme Court for the very first time in the history of the Nigerian judiciary pen and down and sent to the uh, former CJN. So we expect him to address those issues frontally, one by one. 
and then and uh, once he is able to do that we believe that the, the the supreme court will be in a better position to function well and then we expect to have the six appointment into the supreme court to bring the number to the required constitutional provided number and that is 21 to bring the number to 21 we expect them to bring in the uh, justices that had been recommended they have recommended some justices to be elevated to the supreme court we expect them to bring that I mean to make the we expect the new CJN to uh, to to expedite action to ensure the appointment of these uh, uh, new justices to boost the number and to ensure that there is acceleration of hearing of some cases backlog of cases that have been there in the Supreme Court for 10 to 20 years some cases that you say you take Button, but now it's about time for us to move on to the next topic and we have on standby now Barista Michael Folong Sholano. He is a legal practitioner and former Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice. We thank you so much for joining us at this time, sir. Thank you very much. And I see it's like you're having a busy day, but really it is much appreciated that you took time to join us at this time. Thank you. I'm happy to join so, you. Now, moving on to the to the topic of the day, which is of uh, Oyo's deputy governor. It is not uncommon for politicians to defect from one party to another. In fact, it's what occurs normally. It's what we see occurring regularly in the political sphere. And shortly after the deputy governor cross-capitated from PDP to APC, he was levied with charges on gross misconduct, abuse of office, financial recklessness, abandonment of office, official duty, insubordination, and other offenses. And this is despite the deputy governor's claim that he had a clean record and he has been doing his best as the deputy governor of Oyo State. Do you feel like all this allegation against him is just a cover-up to kick him out of office? Yes, I believe so. I, be, I very, very, very much believe so. Since the inception of this administration, the, there has been no peace between the governor and the deputy. And as far as I know, as I'm aware, the deputy governor had been sidelined from the inception of this administration. But the man had not complained. He had never complained. He had, uh, as far as we know, be complying with all directives, a lot of instructions given by the governor. He had not been made to really, really participate as a deputy governor should in the government. So when we now read about this allegation, even though the rumor of impeachment came as early as probably the first year of this administration. Because at that time, there were rumors that um, the deputy governor, the governor wanted to impeach the deputy governor because he believed, according to the rumors, that the deputy governor had an ambition of uh, contesting and becoming the governor in future. That rumor was kept under wraps. They were denied, even the deputy governor was denied, but we knew he was only denied the obvious. Everybody could see. Now that he now deliberately decided to change and go to another party, uh, I think that is what triggered the governor to say, now enough is enough, he was going to impeach him. So the uh, instrumentality of impeachment was being used mala fide not in the trust of the people and not according to the tenets or the uh, the intentions intentions of the lawmakers mm, all right thank you sir but you know you mentioned something about him not being able to do much as the deputy governor of oil state but would you agree with me that a lot of deputy governors always complain about their position being redundant because I could tell you that a lot of people don't usually know the deputy governors of their state. 
Could we still fault that to the state governor not carrying along the deputy governor, or if it is, is it what the seat is cast with, so to speak? I believe that has come about because of our people's penchant for power. Because we have something we call delegated authority. You cannot delegate authority to me if I don't know anything about it. If you don't carry me along, before you delegate. So most of them do come to power and they get all the past to themselves, to themselves, giving themselves only the attention that the power attracts, which is not proper. The best way and the really main intention of the lawmakers who made the constitution is for the deputy governor to really be your assistance in carrying out your duties. It's not that the deputy governor will only be hearing of policies or projects when they come to uh, cabinet meetings on a weekly basis. No. The deputy governor should be part and parcel of the government so that whatever the governor would do, he ought to have been discussing it. But you see, this is also part of the breakdown of the of the democracy, break, uh, the breakdown of what we call party power. In the good old days, even the governor will only be part and parcel of those that will formulate the policies in the, at the party level. But we have left the party level. We have donated all powers of government to the go to the to the to the, to the governor. It is not proper. That's why we are having issues like this. Should if there had been a party power structure in which everything the governor would do had been discussed at the party level, the deputy governor would be there, the governor will be there, his cabinet probably will be there. At the party level, they already knew what the governor is going to do. At that level, what the deputy governor will do will have been spelled out. But what do we have? They said the governor is the leader of the party. Whereas the governor ought not to be the uh, leader of the party. It is the chairman that ought to be the leader of the party. The governor is the leader of government, not of the party. So if they have been adopting it the way it ought to have been done, the way they do it in other climes, all these things will not have come out. In the case of uh, Oyo State, the, like every other governors we'll be having, like Ajima B, like uh, the, the major problem between Akala and uh, um, uh, was his, his own deputy was also the same thing. They made them to look like rats. Sometimes probably they allowed them to go and chair the uh, tenders board, the government tenders board, which has the power to approve contracts 50 million and less. That is all. But they don't do more than that. They sh that should not be. That should not be. They should be heard. They should be seen. They should be working. Okay. All right, sir. So, but do you feel like it could also be on the part of the deputy governor, you know, to for he himself or herself now stand up to do some particular, take some proactive step, so as not to be redundant in office. <laughs> That there is nothing he can do. He is representing the government. He is representing his governor. If the governor does not give him the, the power or the or anything, that is nothing. Mind you, everything he will do will still require money. If he cannot approve money, if he cannot have access to money, if he cannot even do anything about budgeting or whatever, there is nothing he can do. He cannot help himself anyway. All right, sir. But now moving back to the issue of political party, would you agree with me that a lot of political parties see their members defecting from their party to another party as extremely disloyal? Well, no, no. Well, I won't call it extremely a disloyal. After Each politician after wants to play a role. Well me. So maybe but I can call it. You are. Better. In a, in a government and your party forms the government 
But you are made to do that. You have no choice than to than to abandon that that party to another party that probably is allowed is ready to make use of you. But now, Every politician you... believes that he or she has something to offer. Yes, indeed. That's why they well, are there. Would you, have, would you also agree that maybe the reason the PDP is embittered right now is because they feel the loss that would come to their party if Rauf Olani, well, he has already left the party with Rauf Olani leaving the party. Do you also feel like maybe this might just be a way to retaliate? Maybe they are angry with him because he left the party. No, it's not a matter of retaliation. It's a matter of, like the Yoruba used to say, if this place does not uh, permit me, I will go to another land where I can be permitted. If you have a dream and you believe that your dreams are being hampered, in this case, not only hampered, but totally blocked. He has no choice than to, to look for other pastures where it can be of much uh, better use. So if he dumps PDP, uh, it is the, if the PDP says we don't need you, we are not making use of you, then why can't somebody else make use of him? Hmm. All right, sir. But as far as I know, is there any law prohibiting a deputy governor for defecting? Because it's as if it's an adult. If the governor is from a party and the deputy governor being of another party, you have to agree with me that that does not sound right. Well, it may not sound right, but it's legally right. You remember that <laughs> Article 2 left uh, PDP for AC, AC, to form AC with uh, Tinubu in, in those days. They went to court, and the, court, the Supreme Court declared that you only have a joint ticket to enter. You don't have a joint ticket to exit. So he has his fundamental one right to join any party of his choice. And it's not prohibited by the Constitution. So he has the right to, he can move, he can move on with his life. I'm sure he regretted ever accepting to be deputy to the president administration. He regrets it, I'm sure of that. Mm, okay, all right, sir. So, but now, does Ralph Olanio really does have any intention of contesting for governorship, or is it just rumors flying around? If you remember, in 2019, he was a governorship candidate of ADC. It, they had so many problems, and it was during that problem of, with their own primary election that the present governor attracted him and called him to come and be his deputy, and he accepted that. Well, if it is to serve the state, he will accept it. That does not mean that he jettisoned his ambition to run for governorship. He might have jettisoned it. He may still want it, probably. But by the, if you remember, by the time he left, our primaries, our primaries have, been, have been conducted and have been closed. So definitely he did not leave to become governor somewhere else. Otherwise he would have left earlier when parties were given the time, when they were trying to conduct their primaries so that he could be a governorship candidate of another party. I read it somewhere that he said that so many parties wanted him to come and be their governorship candidate, but he did not, he rejected it. He ensured that all the primaries have been concluded parties already have their candidates that was when he now decided to leave so the, the, that that to me means that he didn't leave because he wanted to be governor at all cost no i don't think so okay all right so well luckily the court ruled in his favor saying that they they um the state assembly to maintain status quo and not go on with the impeachment at least for now but what are his chances of winning the case and still remain in office until the next election what are the chances of what i didn't get that question right okay the court unluckily the court ruled in favor of raouf uh, or learning uh, of the state assembly maintaining status quo that they should halt the impeachment process. But now, what are the chances of win of him actually winning that case and remaining in office? Well, normally one should not comment on matters that are before the court. 
the only thing okay. that I can say is that I believe his chances of winning are very, very high. Because mm -hmm. in their in the early way of um, going about the whole thing, the bedrock of the impeachment is faulty. Very, very faulty. I've read the letter written to him on social media, but I don't know what they went to, what his lawyer presented in court, but if it is that letter, that letter cannot fly to make an impeachment. Because the constitution is very clear. You have to state his offenses. You will not, you will not just summarize and say um, for gross misconduct, for disobedience. No, no, no. You have to state what the, the what disobedience on so 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 date on so so date. Just like in a charge, in a criminal charge, they never stated all those things in this in the scanty letters that I saw. If it is that letter they took to court, I don't think it will fly. And that is, and that is the beginning of the impeachment. Once that one is knocked off, I don't see, I don't see, I don't see the case uh, going anywhere. Yes, and if you remember, when he was told to move his office to, was it the Ministry of Environment, he did so willingly and he described himself as a very obedient person. Yes, he is. Is a very, very humble fellow. Very, very humble person. It, that is why it, it is very difficult for any person to say, oh, we, we, we want to impeach you because of your disobedience. No, he's always following others. <laughs> that, that is the clear proof. He's a very humble fellow. He does things for the benefit of the people. That's the way I know him. And uh, I, I have no mind, right? I mean, there is nothing that can change my mind about him. Okay, but you don't feel that it is a problem that majority of the people in the house ruled for his impeachment. Oh, it seems we've lost the connection with Michael Lano once more. So now we'll go on a break and let us continue with what Nigerian lawyers are expecting from the newly uh, from